Uh-oh. Come on, Brad. Are they open candles? <laughs> yep, this was me. Eight years old, being pranked with trick candles. Just over five feet tall and about 120 pounds of pure cholesterol and sugar. In 2013, I got my health in shape and haven't looked back. Until now. Welcome to episode one of Brucey Boy's Childhood Obesity Series, where we revisit the signature meals of the first 14 years of my life. It's time to unleash the prepubescent beast. All right, what is up day is Saturday, July 25th. It is 7.25 a.m. And you know that means only one thing. This video, absolute clickbait. Because you're probably thinking, oh, well, if you're actually eight years old right now, Bruce, and it's 7.25 a.m., you're probably jamming out to Radio Disney on your way to school. And you know what? You're 100% right. Video is clickbait. You guys can just go ahead and exit now. All right, sweet, not all the Fairweather fans are gone. Probably the most signature meal of my childhood was this bad boy right here. The Jimmy Dean Breakfast Croissant Witch. We call them breakfast burgers though growing up because it was basically like a burger, uh, except you get to eat it for breakfast, which is pretty cool. My 120 pound eight year old self would just knock anyone out of the way to get to one of these bad boys. And then of course, signature little chocolatey chocolate milk. At eight years old, I'd be eating this meal at about 5.30ish a.m. I don't know why I woke up absurdly early. I think it was just an opportunity to bond with my mom because she'd also be up at that time and I needed some love growing up. I'd be watching Lilo and Stitch on Disney Channel. Sadly, it's not on the airwaves, but we've got Disney Plus right here. So we'll go ahead and see what episodes of Lilo and Stitch we can find. So only two seasons, so obviously a very, very successful show because you either die a hero, live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Food theme channel, food theme video. We gotta go with this french fry episode here. So we'll go ahead and cue this bad boy up. We'll go ahead and first though, take our first bite of this Jimmy Dean breakfast burger here. Remember, hand sanitizer up. Welcome to the new normal kids. Probably haven't had a bite of this sandwich since 2000, 2013. Mm. The croissant, it's a cloud. Look at those layers. Look at the amount of care that Jimmy Dean put into creating this croissant witch here. There were these little specks of red things, which I was like, oh, it's pepper. Super healthy growing up. So of course I got all my veggies in for the day just with breakfast. Of course, a little chocolate milk here. Yep, that's chocolate milk. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just savor every last bite of this here while we go ahead and watch some uh, Lilo and Stitch. So hope you guys enjoy watching me eat. All right, meal complete. That took about three minutes. Anyway, that wraps up breakfast for us there. The macros are gonna be somewhere on the screen. And then, you know, try to keep it characteristic to what uh, eight-year-old obese child would do. Uh, you know, going to school, relatively sedentary lifestyle here. So until lunchtime rolls around, we'll go ahead and just chill out. I'll work on a couple projects and try to stay seated as much as I can, keep energy at a low today. Try to embrace what eight-year-old me would have done back in the day. 12 seconds later. So it is now 8.03, 40-ish minutes since breakfast, and I am already voraciously hungry again. I don't know how I sat through class until lunchtime without eating my classmates, but I think I may know the answer. I never drink water because I didn't like the way it tasted. No idea water had a taste. My go-to drink for about the first 10 years of my life was Powerade. And we're not talking about Powerade Zero. Nay, 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 nay. We're talking about full-fledged, unfiltered Powerade with 200 calories and about 50 grams of added sugar. I drank about maybe, on a good day, about three bottles of these. We're going ahead and crack this bad boy open. Bottoms up. Nectar of the gods. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, it's about nine o'clock now. So I just finished up this Nectar of the Gods here. Somehow the 50-ish grams of sugar are actually holding me over. I feel pretty good. I'm actually kind of feeling a little jittery too. Got a little energy going on. So that lasts about two more minutes. Thinking about this a lot though, it's like I had three of these. That's 600 calories of just liquid calories. And I, I can't believe I did that for so many years. Liquids though, they're kind of like hidden calories. I'm not sure how many kids really understand that. Comment down below if you knew that this is just sugar water growing up or if your parents were able to keep you away from it. There are 50 grams of sugar in this? What, it's like a Powerade or cheesecake? 12 times out of 10, 
I take the cheesecake because cheesecake is delicious and oh, the cheesecake is just so good. Yeah, 903 now. We'll see how long this 50 grams of sugar is going to hold me over until lunchtime. And a few minutes later. All right, so it's just a little past 10 right now. I'm going to start working on my second power right here of the day just to make sure we ride that wave, flatten the curve with the sugar high, at least slightly better than how the U.S. has been doing. It's also snack time. And of course, we've got a snack here. Oreo minis. We'll go ahead and dig into this little meal here, and then afterwards we'll head off to lunch. One hour later. Uh, to make this as accurate as possible to eight-year-old me, I'm currently now sitting in the back right behind the driver's seat like I always used to. Filling in for dad today is my sister Adele. <laughs> <laughs> Follow her being well with Adele on Instagram. She's actually got some pretty sweet I wasn't posts. Ready. Some <laughs> she wasn't ready. Alright, about to head in and get the goods. Mask up AZ. Got the goods. Now I'm gonna head over to Barnes and Noble for a little extracurricular activity. I'd be lying if I didn't say I was a little nervous right now, though, because I have to go into the kids section dressed as a kid. So far, so good. Young readers, young readers. Reference that's too high for reading. There they are. Okay, which one is it? After about five minutes of searching and reading every single title. Big day for baseball, baby. Oh yeah. All right, last stop. It's lunchtime, kids. We'd always go to Panda Express, and then my order was always kid's meal, fried rice, orange chicken, and then a side of their fried shrimp, and then the crab ragoons. They didn't have the fried shrimp available online, which was big sad, but they didn't have the cheese ragoons. But yeah, let's go and get this set up, and then uh, dig into our little meal here. Oh. Ecstasy. We've got our fried rice and then the classic orange chicken chocolate chunk cookie, fortune cookie, and then more liquid sugar in the form of orange soda. And of course, no straw because save the turtles. And then we got our ragoons right here. Oh, yes. Without further ado, classic eight year old Bruce lunch right here on the weekends. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> so good. Not gonna lie though, fried rice, a little on the dry side. Uh, oh yeah, speaking of which, I didn't give you guys a time update. Currently, 12, 12 p.m. here. All right, now we're going to dig into these cheese crab ragoons. Oh, that's not like Christmas. Waking up in the morning, opening that first present. I don't know what is. It's like an orchestra in my mouth. It's amazing. Shout out to that Pan Express that I went to. Dude walks in and put a mask on. Like, what are you doing? Stupid or something, dude? Like, look around. Pan Express staff immediately, sorry, sir, can't serve you. We're gonna have to ask you to leave. And dude's like, really? And I'm thinking like, yes, really? And Pan Express goes, yes, really? I'm just like, A plus service right there. That's our little main course down right here. All right, bottoms up, orange soda. Either I'm still in shock from the power rate earlier today, or their dispenser just has a lot of water. This tastes really watered down right now. I'll take it. That means less sugar in here, hopefully, maybe. Probably not. You know, one of the benefits of living in Arizona is that anything, if you ever bring chocolate to your car, even if it's like a five minute ride home, it's still gonna melt a little, which just makes this chewy chocolate chunk cookie just that much more gooier and oh baby. Honestly, probably one of the more underrated chocolate chip cookies out there in the industry. Good amount of chocolate chips too. I don't know if you can see this chocolate bomb going on right now. Orange soda, done. Little final gift here at the end of the meal, fortune cookie. And I always like adding some kind of random phrase like uh, in the bathroom or in bed at the end of a fortune cookie. We'll let Google go ahead and decide this time around though. Okay, Google, give me a random phrase. Glaive, noun, a sword. You will learn the value of a kind word with a glaive, Panda Express. Deep, probably metaphorical, talking about how, you know, words can be just as powerful as swords and weapons, which is very relevant for our times around here. What do you need? You didn't finish already? Yeah. You didn't even offer anything. Sorry. 
So total calories for this meal are gonna be somewhere on the screen right there, macros as well too. And you always know after lunch, that's when kids are kind of comatose. Usually Reese's came afterwards. I, not a big recess guy, though I did slay at tetherball. Don't mess with me when it comes to tetherball. I will absolutely annihilate you. Same with Foursquare. Wall ball, not so much. After you've eaten and then ran around, they know you're kind of comatose, which is the perfect time for reading time, which now... <sighs> it is now currently 1.13 p.m. Um, I mentioned earlier, wasn't a big recess kid growing up. And, you know, I wasn't really aware of the whole being overweight. I was always the tallest kid in my class, so it was like, hey, I may be a little bit round or two, but at least I'm taller than everyone else's class, so like all the food is worth it. You know, I knew I'd never be faster than some of these kids or be as athletic, despite the fact, actually, despite the fact that I absolutely killed it uh, playing Little League back in the day. Like, look at that form right there. Bent knees, athletic stance. God, I should have gone pro. Even at a young age, I knew I had to be good at something. It ended up being just, you know, being a nerd. Like, spelling quizzes, the times tables, work my butt off to just go ahead and like ace them as much as I could. I actually broke down in tears crying once because I missed the word weird on a spelling test. It broke my heart as a kid. I read a lot too. So much so that I really didn't understand this whole concept of video game consoles. When someone said that they couldn't wait to play at their PlayStation, I envisioned one of those just like massive Hot Wheels tracks. You know, you know the commercials where it's like, whoa, and there's kids around these like massive structures and they're just like losing their mind. That was basically what I thought PlayStation was. So you used to say I was a nerd and I had a lot of books. In the third grade at age eight, I was reading a series of unfortunate events. My first really like literary series love was going to be the Magic Treehouse series here. What I'm gonna try to do is see how fast I can read from cover to cover this Magic Treehouse book. Came here to watch maybe some speed eating, a lot of food, instead you get some speed reading of a Magic Treehouse book. So maybe see how fast I can read menus. Currently 119 right here. I actually have no clue how fast I read now. Uh, I stopped reading for fun in high school and now I'm starting to read again for fun. If you define fun as the book Poor Economics. Three, two, one, go. Eight semesters later. And, all right. 12 out of 10 would recommend. 25, 54, about 26 minutes, 146 right there. You know, maybe this is the next viral challenge or how fast can you read a Magic Treehouse book? Yeah, so it is just about two o'clock, which means only one thing, snack time. So maybe this angle works better. Uh, you can't really see the rest of my head, but I'm not that attractive, so it doesn't really matter. Right now we've got our two Powerades down. By far, three best Powerade flavors, white cherry, then we got the fruit punch, and then third, is this Mountain Berry Blast. Yes, taste rocks. Signature snack here was always Ritz crackers and aerosol cheese. There's just something about cheese coming out of a can that is just so incredible. Has science gone too far? Until I can squeeze cheese out of my pores, that's when you'll know science has gone just far enough. And you guys know what needs to be done, right? Exactly. We gotta just go for just, just one shot in, in the mouth. You know, I've been keeping a mental list of bad things I've done in my life. Adding something to that list right now. Uh, I promised some artful designs. And after consuming a quarter of the can, I feel like I'm letting you guys down right now. First of all, we have the classic one right here. A nice little spiral. A little, little star action right there in the middle. Pop it in. There we go. A little back and forth action. So we got the basic ones out of the way. Now, let's get a little crazy. Really want to impress your crush that you had back in elementary school. I made you a starfish. And this is probably the most technical out of all of them here. Little guide, you create yourself a little rosebud going on over there. If you took Picasso and Bob Ross and they had a child conceived in a fat of cheese, basically what I was as a child right there. How could I forget the classic smile? And this will be tomorrow morning, cheese mountain. And then you just kind of Boop right there and get yourself one of those big boy Ritz. Layered cake. Like I said, cakes are fun. Aerosol cheese and Ritz crackers, much more fun.
There have been moments multiple times as a kid where I just stand in my kitchen and go to town where I finish an entire roll of Ritz and a can of cheese. After you hear the of an empty aerosol can of cheese and you realize this is what rock bottom kind of sort of feels like. Afterwards, let's digest and then we'll do a little bit of activity, nothing too intense because I would never have done anything super intense at this age. All right, uh, just a brief update. 308. Breathing has become significantly harder. Every single breath feels like I am blowing through a tube of cheese, probably because I ate a tube of cheese. I feel like I'm eight years old again and about 40 pounds overweight. I told you guys, I promised you guys a little treat here. It's a little bit of a, a 2006 cultural icon, generation defining event. The movie that I'm sure you guys all know and love, Zoom. <laughs> Totally kidding what we're gonna be doing now, of course, you guys probably realizing, 2006 was the year High School Musical came out. And now, this deserves an entirely separate video, but I am a massive High School Musical fan. High School Musical 3, best High School Musical. Troy is not the villain. Don't listen to anyone or anything else. I've never actually learned the all in this together dance. Part of it was that toxic masculinity starts really early. As a male eight-year-old, you couldn't really admit that he liked High School Musical, let alone had a slight man crush on Troy Bolton. So today we're gonna go ahead and try to learn the entire dance. Before we get started, I need to go ahead and change into something a little bit more appropriate. There we go. Got this video tutorial up here. It's 20 minutes long, so that means in theory I should be able to learn this dance in 20 minutes. A few minutes later. A little longer than a few minutes later. Five minutes later. So I'm also realizing now, she didn't mirror her video. I'm just gonna be doing it opposite, which is gonna be heartbreaking, but you know, we'll take what we can get. I'm a boy filled with cheese right now. I need any win I can find right now. Four to six days later. Several song-filled hours later. Camera ran out of space. It's currently 4.09 p.m. And so we're gonna go ahead just to save space and battery power in the camera. Cut uh, to this footage of a very skinny boy trying to learn a 2006 dance, which you're about to see. Uh, maybe disturbing to some people, but it's basically an eight-year-old, 110, 120 pound boy living on his dreams right here, right now. Zach Efron, this is for you. Yes! I learned more of it, but this is like a whole video in and of itself, so comment down below if you want to see a full High School Musical cheat day slash learning the We're All This Together dance. That's where we just eat High School Musical themed foods or Gabriella's mom's cookies slash brownies. But the dessert afterwards had to be the best part. Her mom makes the best brownies in the entire world. Yeah, I know. I've had them. Let me know down below if you guys want that. It's time for dinner now. Dinner is served, y'all. Today, we only have the finest frozen meal of them all, kid cuisine. Is it really kid cuisine if a little bit of the brownie batter doesn't get on your healthy corn and your mac and cheese? This is the SpongeBob version. So we got little SpongeBob nuggets here. Um, they also promised Patrick nuggets, but I uh, can't win them all. This was a classic meal though. We had the, the red box and it's like, you know, the adult version. But if you want to be secretly a kid, I was trying to get that one today and they were completely out of anything that had either the pudding, which I thought was just undercooked brownie batter, or the brownie. So we had to go kid cuisine because you have to get the brownie. Which we want to thank you guys too for sticking with the video if you made it this far. Figure out these camera angles here and probably gonna try to find a spot in the house that isn't my bedroom because this is kind of sad. If you made it this far through the video, comments brownie corn. And of course, to have on a drink there, we gotta finish up our final power of the day, number three here. I actually also nearly got some chicken nugget dinosaurs because first of all, best childhood meal ever. But then also too, I'd love to just like pretend that I was the asteroid that came and took them all. So I'd eat them all one by one. One of each would survive. So I was also kind of like the flood from Noah's Ark. The ketchup was their blood, and I'd peel off their skin slowly, and I'd just bite off their head first, just slowly devour them, and enjoy every last waking moment as the food just nourishes my body there. Well, I'll let it out here. Uh, Kid Cuisine, the SpongeBob edition, came with these awesome glasses. I'm looking pretty sick right there. As an eight-year-old, favorite thing to turn on after TV, you know, long day of school, coloring was really hard, times tables, we got to sevens. Sevens are really hard, guys. Turn on some PBS. Favorite shows that really stood out to me, though, My Miguel, Arthur, Ruff the dog, 
but above all else, Cyber Chase. So I've got an episode of Cyber Chase pull up my laptop for it. Forget, because I always forget the time. 4.42. Bon appetit, as they say in the land of Kit Cuisine. Thank you very much, Mr. Penguin Man. Chocolate corn. I'm telling you. If there are two things to go together, it's definitely chocolate and microwavable corn. Chewy. It's somehow still no flavor. Kit Cuisine, I don't know how you do it. Cheese here. I feel like I'm feeding a child. Okay. Glue. I never ate glue as a child, which is surprising seeing how I've acted throughout this video. But I imagine that's what it tastes like. Finish up the Elmer's glue mac and cheese. We're gonna have to plow through these SpongeBob nugs right here. Ketchup by far, my favorite condiment as a kid. Slightly better than KFC. Only slightly though. I think the fact that it is a shape. <laughs> Sorry. That signature cross contamination of a kid cuisine box. Oh, it's actually colored like SpongeBob too. Look at that. Oh, it was their game plan all along. We all knew it. Okay, that wasn't filling at all. Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for. That glorious, glorious brownie. You can just tell how gooey it's gonna be. I don't know if you can see my fork just bouncing right off of it, barely being able to penetrate it. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and one bite this one. Mm. I love it when I end my meal with table bread. Only Kid Cuisine can make that happen. Wow, I've hit a new low. But Adriel Bruce though, he knew what was up and he always had a second dessert because he was always from day one a firm believer that humans have two stomachs, one for regular boring food and one for dessert. Boom, right here, a bar of gold. And by gold, I mean ice cream sandwich. Um, this one's cookies and cream. My favorite though growing up was Neapolitan. Ice cream sandwiches were just the bomb. Maybe just me, because I really sweat. I still have really sweaty hands, but then the the cookie sandwich bread bun part would always stick to my fingers. And you had like a whole nother meal that took forever to suck off your fingers afterwards. So it could be a two minute snack it ends up being like a three minute snack. There we go. What a way to end the day, ice cream sandwich and listening to Hacker lay out his big time plan to stop those little earthling kids and take over the motherboard. Mm. Oh, that's so good. You bite into it, squeeze down on the buns, and then just the ice cream melts right there. It started out as ice cream, became a milkshake, and then at the end it becomes a life-changing experience. Can't get that with any other dessert really. It's a cheesecake. Cheesecake. Boom, there it is. See what I'm talking about, guys? You just get that last little bit of cookie residue on your finger. <clears throat> and with that, my eight-year-old diet is complete. So the calories and macros for this meal will be put somewhere on the screen here. We're gonna analyze the overall macros for the day here. Easily had over 3,000 calories. 4,055 calories. Overall, how did I feel today? Breakfast, 716 calories. That wasn't filling at all. And snack time was pretty good. The Oreos were always, always a treat. Lunch, 1140. That's what you get when you get the orange chicken on Pan Express. Good, that's filling. I felt pretty good there for a solid hour, even as I was speed reading. I burnt a lot of calories speed reading. That's a lot of brain energy right there. The magic tree house, I'm telling you. The whole tree house traveling back through time takes a lot, big brain power. Like there's Rick and Morty and then there's the magic tree house. Dinner, 600 calories. So that's not bad. That's what I eat whenever I'm trying to cut. Probably cutting a little too extreme as you can tell from my dancing, basically just a dancing skeleton there. Halloween came early y'all. But then finally snacking. Snacking is the killer there. It's just these empty, empty, empty liquid calories. I was just left throughout the day kind of just craving strawberries. Just one strawberry. One strawberry's not gonna kill you. Just go on, eat, eat it, eat it, eight-year-old Bruce. Bring a pretty eye-opening day and I can't wait to see what these next two episodes bring within the series. But if you like this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, show them that you too can eat like an eight-year-old at the age of 22 and have a good day dancing the high school musical.